Today, we are playing Catan Expansion Seafarers, and we're playing Scenario 1, Heading for New Shores. So this is the game in Seafarers that kind of gives you that basic of how to use the main components in the expansion, and then it just adds on top of this to add different layers to the game. So I'm just going to explain some of the pieces here that come with the Seafarers expansion. So the Catan Chits, these ones here, I think we got some or most with the Traders and Barbarians expansion, mostly to use with two player Catan. Um, however, these ones are also used when you discover new islands. It comes with hexes. Some of ours are labeled because they're from another expansion. But they're just blue tiles. They make up the water. Comes with gold mines. So if you build a settlement on these hexes and the number is rolled, you get to choose whatever resource you want. If it's a city, you get to choose two resources. They don't have to be the same. You're also going to get ships for each player. They're kind of, they can add on to the roads and they can help give you the longest road. They do count towards that. You also get, here we'll start here, you get these harbors because again you're not using the edges like normal. So you have these harbors that can be moved all over the islands. In heading for new shores, you're going to need these two pieces here. They are the top and the bottom of the map. And in heading for new shores, you need two, we call them single edges, one on each side. For the main part of building the outside of the hex, you're going to use the normal shores. However, you're just going to flip them over so that they are completely blue, so that you can't see the sand or those harbors. So, we're going to take some time, we're going to set up the board, and... Oh! I almost forgot! This, this black ship right here. So, that is the pirate ship, and he works like the robber. So, if you roll a 7, you have the choice to move the robber or to move the pirate ship. If you move a pirate ship onto a hex, in the water, nobody can build boats or ships, these little ships, on that hex. So we're going to set up the board and we will be right back. Okay, so we have the board set up. So the number one things to remember is the gold mines go out in the islands. Um, we placed everything else randomly, however there is a map in the instruction book that tells you exactly where to place things, to have things maybe more leveled for everybody. 
We like taking a chance, moving things around if it's too crazy. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the harbors on. So shuffle them up and you place them in these locations. And again, because they're shuffled, we do it totally random. This is not what the instruction book says. I'm just looking at the actual locations, not the precise harbors. So again, if you want to move those, you definitely can. I'll get my team to take a look. Does anybody want to move the harbors? Nope. Looks good to us. Okay. So again, these ships get placed on the ocean, just where roads would get placed. They must be placed after a settlement. So you have a settlement, you can put a ship there, there, okay? What you cannot do is place a settlement and a road and then a ship. You need to split up by a segment. Roads cannot be attached to the ships. Like that. Everybody will build two settlements on the main island. If you take your ships across and you build on one of these small little islands, you get two victory points. So that's what the chits are used for in this game, is they are actual victory points. So if you build out there, you get these. If you upgrade to a city, you do not get more. It's just for finding new land. To build a ship costs, and it tells you right here, one wood, one sheep. So that's the cost of a ship. What else? The game goes up to 14 victory points. And I think that's it. Everything else is kind of the same, but we'll stop if we notice that we need to point out something else. So we'll roll to see who goes first. We'll place our settlements and we'll get going. <laughs> Okay, so change in plans. So we decided that we were going to take out the 2 and the 12 and replace them with a 6 and a 9. Um, so we do this, we do this sometimes. 2s and 12s don't rule. Sometimes we get frustrated. This moves the game along quicker, um, keeps players involved more. So if a 2 or a 12 does happen to roll, we usually just roll again and be on our way. Um, Everybody's going to have a different opinion on that, and that's totally fine. We agree with it as a family, and I think so as long as you're whole, everybody that's playing with you agrees on it, then I think any mod to any game is totally fine. So we ended up having to take off our people, change the board a little bit. The one thing that we never do change is we keep the gold numbers the same as they are in the instruction booklet. So in the instruction book, they were a four and a five. We keep them like that because having an 11 or a six on a gold mine is pretty unfair. So we like to keep them right in the middle. Okay, so a couple things that I wanted to point out. 
One, if you do build your settlement on the shore, as I did, you can start off with a ship instead of a row. Uh, the other modification that we're going to be playing with from here on in um, is to make it go quicker, to give you that good head start, we like to collect from both settlements, not just the last one that we placed. So I would pick up two sheep for that one, but I would also pick up a wood, a rock, and a sheep for that one. So if you have good placement, you're going to be starting with six resources. If you chose a harbor, you get five. Yes, and so I had chosen a harbor. Not necessarily, it's not a good harbor for me. I was pointing out it's the brick harbor, and I have no brick at all. I'm, I'm headed to the island. That's going to be my strategy for the game. So we will stop when we need to, but by this point, if you're at this point in uh, in watching these, you should pretty much know all the basics of Catan, so we won't have to stop as much as we continue. seven cards you have to get rid of half of your cards and he has a choice to move the robber normal and the pirate ship so if he chooses to use the pirate ship for example to stop me he would place the pirate ship here that means I can no longer build or move my boats that are on that hex so if he thinks I'm going towards the gold mine that would be smart because I would not be able to place there so I'd have to roll a seven if to... If anybody rolled a seven and move and, and, the... Yeah, and move the pirate ship. Um, <clears throat> the knight cards that are in here, you cannot move the pirate ship. They do not allow that. They are only for the robber. So, Dad, which one are you moving? Tell me what your card is for. Well, I guess I'll just have to find out what their card is. Oh, he's moving the robber. And he's going to steal from the kids. Thank you. 
So, just wanted to point out that with the road building card, you can build boats as well. So, I'm going to go ahead, build two of those. One, two, three, four, five. I now have the longest road. That's game. Dad wins. Orange wins. So his points, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Longest road, eight, nine. Largest army, 10, 11. 12, 13 for the Catan chits for building on this island here. And 15 for eggplant parmesan. And yeah, bonus. That's bonus points. If somebody could flip that over. And there's his last victory point for 14. So this is the beginning of seafarers. Probably one of the greatest expansions for well, table wise, make sure you got a big table. Super fun. Scenario one, heading for new shores. And that's it. Keep playing and have fun.